Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, well, today this rather inflated fairing is carrying an interesting piece of cargo. So, you may have been paying attention to the commercial resupply mission. They just announced the new finalists for the next round of contracts. And one of them is Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser. And it really is a dream come true because, hey, it's a space plane, and space planes are automatically way cooler. They look cooler, they have to be aerodynamic, they look like real spaceships. The kind that Flash Gordon would fly around in. Now, to satisfy the requirements for the commercial resupply missions, they had to add an external cargo pod to the rear of it. That's what's attached there. It includes solar panels, it carries about uh, three tons of cargo, I think, and uh, it'll also carry stuff on the outside here. Now that is not designed to return but the rest of the spacecraft is and it carries uh, it carries just under two tons of cargo inside it in a pressurized environment. Now the Dream Chaser itself has been in development since about 2004 although it is really the latest in a long line of proposed orbital space planes. The only other miniature orbital space plane that has really uh, had much development has been the X-37 which has so far flown in space three times. And since we're visiting the ISS, it's worth mentioning the X-38, which was supposed to be a lifeboat, although while it would fly through the atmosphere on wings, for landing it would deploy a parafoil to bring the spacecraft down. That was 90% complete, and then the funding was pulled for it in 2002. Anyway, this particular mod for Kerbal Space Program has been developed by Art Wally. It includes basically the space plane, the cargo pod there I've built myself using various bits and bobs. Uh, it is really quite impressively performing, as in it's way more performant than the real thing. It has way, way more delta V and it glides significantly better. But on the other hand, it does not feature the folding wings that the new version of the Dream Chaser includes. For the competition, it needed to fit within a 5 meter payload fairing, so it includes now little wings and it fits inside that. Original versions of the Dream Chaser had it on the outside of the rocket. Also note that this model is, uh, I think it's two-thirds scale, so it's uh, a little smaller than the real thing. However, as you're going to see momentarily, <laughs> uh, this whole uh, this whole ISS is actually significantly smaller than the real thing. This is a, not my model. Somebody else built this fantastic stock model of the International Space Station. And, uh, well, that means that the parts aren't actually the same size as the real parts on the space station. Docking it was actually a little harder than I expected because there, there was no translation thrusters fore and aft, so I couldn't control my distance, uh, you know, in fore and aft. I did have to use the main thrusters to arrest my uh, rendezvous velocity here. So I just let it kind of slide backwards, and before I knew it, I mean, literally before I knew it, I was suddenly, oh, wait, I've just bumped into the space station. Hmm, this looks wrong. Remember those solar panels? Those solar panels in the real space station are over 30 meters long. This is not what it would actually look like in real life. But never mind, look, we have a mission which has resupplied the space station. And it does look pretty cool, but one of the less cool things about this is this is actually the Dreamer mod. In a rather um, controversial move last year, the Sierra Nevada legal team sent a cease and desist to Kerbal stuff saying, please don't host this mod because it's using the Dream Chaser name. So the mod has changed its name to the Dreamer mod. It's removed all mentions of Sierra Nevada Corporation. Uh, and instead, we still get to fly something that looks pretty much like the real thing, but isn't actually using the real name. And, and honestly, I suspect it's just, you know, their legal department doing their job and not actually knowing what social media or anything is. So... I wouldn't necessarily imagine that there's any malice involved here. Anyway, I decided that I was going to try flying a re-entry on this. So the the cargo pod is not designed for re-entry, but uh, it doesn't. It is going to be ditched back in the atmosphere. So you can put a few tons of trash inside it and have that dropped into the atmosphere by the Dream Chaser. All we do is use the main engines to bring the periaps down to 35 kilometers, and then we turn around to a suitable re-entry attitude. And then from this point on, we pretty much wait for us, us to, uh, well, I wanted to wait for the sun to come up before I ditched this thing, but then I hit the atmosphere, so, uh, well, I decided let's ditch it early. There we go, decouple the node, 
and watch it drift away as, just as sun rises. Ah, oh, perfect timing. The sun rises, and now we have to fly this thing home. It is a glider. There is no propulsion left on this, in theory. I mean, I guess there might be propulsion. It does have engines on it. And the engines are worth talking about because they are hybrid rocket motors. Sierra Nevada were actually developing the engines for Spaceship 2, but then Virgin Galactic changed their mind and decided to build their own engines in-house. But they're essentially throttleable engines that can be relit a couple of times, so it gives them flexibility, but also they're very stable, the propellant is very stable, so they're, they're, it's good for long-term storage, it can stay in orbit for a long time. So the commercial resupply program has uh, two other winners. There we have Orbital Sciences, ATK, with their Cygnus spacecraft, and of course SpaceX with their Dragon spacecraft. And it's interesting to note that they all kind of have their own advantages uh, and strengths. Uh, obviously SpaceX has been the only one that has been able to bring a decent amount of hardware back. That's downmassing capability. And I guess Orbital Sciences actually has the most space inside their vehicle, if I understand correctly. So, you know, if you're going to throw out a lot of garbage, they are the ones to use. And the special thing that Dream Chaser brings to the table is the ability to bring hardware back and essentially land it on any long runway. Obviously, you have to stop other aircraft landing for it, but, you know, if you are really interested in getting your experiment back, and putting it into your lab very quickly, they are the right option. They, also, the other thing is that the G-loading is going to be less than 1.5 G, so it's a smoother ride than Dragon will offer. Anyway, you can see I am going through my re-entry procedure here. I'm making these turns because I, I want to slow my spacecraft down so that I come down over it. We have amazing cross-range capability in this spacecraft. As I said, it's way more capable than the real thing. I'm pretty sure the real thing isn't going to glide nearly as well as this one does. Also, you'll watch the G-meter. I, I fail to achieve less than 1.5 Gs, largely because it's very easy to pitch this thing too hard and you know, generate a lot of drag. Look at me there, three or four Gs. But I need to slow this thing down, and that was the best way to do it. So you can see the mountains there poking up through the clouds. There is the Kerbal, uh, Kerbal Space Center there. Next to a couple of cities, you'll note, I have the, the city mods still installed, so I figured, I, well, they just happened to be there. <laughs> that was me turning off the reaction wheels, incidentally, because you can see that with the stability control enabled, this thing wobbled around like something crazy. So I had to disable stability control. The other thing to note is on the uh, on the nav ball, I had it in target mode, which means the velocity vector was wrong for a lot of it. Only when I switched it into surface mode did the velocity vector start appearing correctly. There was a bit of debris that I had left on the runway purely by accident, but I decided that that was a perfect thing to use to help you know my navigation to make sure that I was on a correct glide slope. This thing glided down nicely at about 120 meters per second, but as we approach the runway, it's time to go live to younger me. Okay, so 3.5 kilometers, and I think we're doing really well here. Okay, now, the only thing is, this thing is moving at 120, and based on practice, I may not be able to stop this thing in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deliberately stall it to bleed off a lot of speed just as I come down. Also, that thing I've targeted, I do not want to hit. Gear is down, which is better than the original flight test of the Dream Chaser. Oh, terrible. Okay, now wobble it, wobble it, flare it, flare it, flare it, and touch. Oh, okay, bit hard there, but we touched down. Now, can we slow down in time? Oh, yeah, I think we're going to slow down in time perfectly. Matwig Kerman, uh, he has been quite impressed. This is a beautiful model. It really does need the... It does need the folding wings, otherwise the fairing is just far too bloated and huge. And it also depends on the fire spitter mod. But yeah, other than that, it's a, it's a nice little, uh, fun little mod. It needs a bit of rebalancing, but whatever! Okay, so I should also point out that it does have a nice little IVA you know, internal view here. But you do need a raster prop monitor if you want to get all those screens working. But all the same, at least we get the cameras, that's pretty cool. Yeah, look, get to see stuff going on there. And there's a runway out there somewhere. Yes, we're hitting it just nicely. So that camera, I guess, looks straight down. And that one, 
looks backwards. That's a nice thing to have. Yeah, and uh, there's seven seats inside this because it's based upon the design that was originally proposed for the commercial crew program, and I should probably pull out of that dive. Okay, so since we still have this city sitting around from you know, previous live streams and things like that, I thought, let's try testing its ability to land on other runways. So, see that roadway there? I think that's actually a little longer than the actual runway that we have. It's also narrower, but I think we can hit that runway and land on it. This is our plan. We just gotta make sure we don't crash into the city first. This thing actually has way better cross-range capability than the real spacecraft. I, you know, it glides way better, as I've said. You know, it needs a lot of tuning, I think, to make it fly well. But whatever. Okay, so get that thing lined up here. It, now, I think to really do it right, there's a couple of buildings I'm gonna to have to thread it between to make maximal use of that roadway there. Obviously, we don't want to end up in the water. Nice view from the inside. We can actually see those goalposts that we're heading, heading for. And you can double click as well and look straight ahead to see everything. Look at that. Axial Aerospace. That is the code name here. The, what do you call it? The Axial Aerospace Dreamer. That's, that's the name. The legally acceptable name. Now we're coming down 400 meters. Try not to hit those big buildings. Try to thread it between these. Good, good, good. Now, now we got to get it on the ground here. And we got to pick one side or the other because there is a ditch in the middle here. Okay, excellent. Ah, touchdown. Brilliant. Breaks on. Breaks on, breaks on, breaks on. Breaks on, breaks off. Breaks on, breaks on. No, that's terrible. Uh, yeah, Karate Kid, awesome movie that everyone should see. And I, of course, talking about the 1980s version. Oh, no, wait a second. Don't, slow down, slow down, slow down, don't, 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 no, 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 no. Ah, crikey. Okay, well, that was pretty good regardless. But you know, we could take this a step further. The ability to land at an airport is one thing. But why not land on the street? outside the office of that biotech company that's paying you know millions of dollars to bring their experiment back from space. So yes, we're going to try landing in downtown Cityville, whatever this is. Now, this street is a lot shorter, so we need to bleed off speed at the last minute. So I'm going to do a flare here. We're going to make this happen. We're totally going to make this happen. So I'm coming in low, and then there's the flare. Excellent. And the other major hazard is the curbs, because of course this isn't the first time I've done this, is it? <laughs> Hitting a curb in this thing will cause it to flip over on its back, like a tortoise in a desert in a Voight-Kampff test. Okay, here we go, and we gotta just line it up. Excellent! Excellent door-to-door -door service, where one door is the ISS and the other door is in downtown Kerbalville. So this is the Dreamer mod, this is the City mod. And that is a pretty good landing, if I do say so myself. Look at that. Now he just needs to find the right address and, you know, drive in there and deliver the experiments or whatever. <laughs> He's just, like, blocking traffic in the middle of the city. Probably shouldn't leave this here. So we've delivered the experiment. We do have fuel left. Let's start taking this back into the air. The engines in this are way more powerful than the real thing. Which means, yes, we can in fact fly. It's also pretty much robust. I have not been able to smash this thing up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, let's try flying it back to the ground. Let's do a low pass. <laughs> let's see if we can hit it between these buildings. This is something that Dream Chase... Whoa! <laughs> I think I just scratched the pit there. <laughs> I'm uh, keeping it low here. This is something that Sierra Nevada has not, in fact, tested. Do not imagine that they will be offering door-to-door -door service, as cool as it is. Although, you know, maybe SpaceX will do that. Maybe they'll try landing their rocket on helipads or something. That would be pretty cool. Okay, and then now back onto the runway here. Just get the speed down. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, and... Oh! There we go. There we go, another beautiful landing. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. <laughs> <laughs>